Public Leaderboard. I'm the director of coffee at Swiss Water Decaffeinated Coffee in British Columbia. My job here involves coffee buying, coffee tasting, and that's what I'm here to talk about with you regarding the topic of decaf. Now, I've done a bunch of things in the industry outside of drinking coffee. Um, I've met a lot of people throughout the country and the world because of my involvement in competitions where I was a competitor and a judge. And for the most part with competitions now, I train judges. So I've met a lot of people throughout Canada and on the world scene because of that. In addition, I do know stuff about green coffee, which is my normal job. I've been a Q grader for a long time, and that helps me with my daily job. So here at Swiss Water Decaf, we decaffeinate coffee. And the way that you decaffeinate coffee is pretty similar no matter what your process is. So in general, decaffeinated coffee, you have your fresh coffee, and then you want to take the caffeine out of it. And caffeine just brews out in water. It's water soluble. So you need some kind of decaffeination medium to put your coffee beans in. Put your beans in, the caffeine transfers into the decaffeination medium. You dry your coffee beans down and you have decaf. The differences in the processes are really in how you take your caffeine out of that medium. You can do it uh, with a chemical free process like a water process or carbon dioxide, or you can use chemical solvents. And I won't talk bad about any decaffeination method because that's not what I'm here for. And also you can make great decaf no matter what. It really depends a lot on the quality of the coffee going in. And so the task that is at hand is figuring out is coffee decaf or not without knowing things about what it is. Now in our daily job in quality assurance, we taste the coffee before decaffeination and after decaffeination. So it's very easy for us to know because we see it and it's also what we do on a daily basis. But even roasters don't necessarily taste the coffee before and after decaffeination. So there's a couple things that you can look at. Now, if you see the green coffee beans, this can be your first clue as to deciphering, is this decaffeinated coffee or not? Because the coffee is processed. So it's going to have a little bit of a different appearance. Now, each decaffeination plant has a bit of a signature with its appearance. And if you know them well enough, you can try and pinpoint them. That's not the goal. But I'll show you some uh, beans from different types of processes. Now, this is a carbon dioxide process. Um, now, the lighting isn't fantastic, but the difference between this and a non-processed coffee is the darkness. You'll see in these beans, the color is pretty consistent throughout the bean. It's just darker than what you would normally see. Now, as a stark example to that, here's some methylene chloride processed coffee, a lighter appearance. You also see a variation in color from bean to bean. So this has had quite a large amount of change in appearance from the green bean. Here's one example of a water process. Uh, and this is a very, very dark bean, kind of a modeled appearance on each bean. But in general, what the takeaway is that it's quite dark. Here's water process that we did here at Swiss Water. Uh, consistent color, still darker than what you would see from a green coffee bean, but it's not uh, modeled, it's not too dark. And lastly, we have ethyl acetate. This is a varied color from bean to bean and a little bit varied within each bean. So in general, if you see beans that are unroasted and you see that they look different from normal green coffee beans because of color, variation, things like that, that's a good clue that your coffee might be decaffeinated. If you see the roasted coffee beans, they're also going to look different because if you start off not looking the same as uh, unprocessed coffee, your roasted coffee will look different than unprocessed roasted coffee. Some hallmarks uh, from plants could either be the coffee looks very matte or it could be that the coffee looks very oily and shiny and looks like a dark roast even though the coffee is not roasted dark at all. So there's one hallmark in the cup that I look for, and it's not tried and true, but it's something that you can try and uh, dig into when you're drinking coffee and thinking, oh, is this a decaffeinated coffee or not? 
Now, decaffeinated coffee happens because you remove caffeine, and caffeine is a soluble solid. Now, the flavor and body and experience of the cup of coffee that you have is made up of the soluble solids that you extract from the bean. Now, there's always more than just caffeine extracted. So you're removing a few percent of soluble solids, and that's a lot. Coffee starts out with about 26% soluble solids available to extract. And what our coffee brewing control chart tells us is that we want to extract about 18 to 22%. Now, if we start out with fewer soluble solids available, it means that it's hard to hit that target. So the way that translates often is a reduced body. It can also translate as a just reduction or kind of muting of flavors but I think that that depends a lot more on the quality of the coffee going in. So what I look for is a reduction in body. Now, this has to be done in a very controlled manner. You have to be brewing in a very controlled way to see, oh, the non-processed coffee has a body like this and the processed coffee has a body like this. So it's not tried and true, doesn't work 100% of the time but that's what I look for. There's nothing else that says, oh, decaffeinated coffee is gonna be more acidic or less acidic or sour or whatnot. I look for that reduction in solids. If you wanna get real geeky about it, the soluble solids extract from decaffeinated coffee at a faster rate than non-processed coffee. So if you have a TDS meter, a total dissolved solids meter, and you break up your brew into different uh, cycles, like you're taking a reading at your first 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 130 seconds, uh, so on and so forth, you will see that the soluble solids extract faster from a decaffeinated coffee than a non-decaffeinated coffee. This might actually be the easiest way to try and figure out if you're dealing with a processed or non-processed coffee, but it's more fun just to drink the coffee. So good luck with the challenge. I hope that you have fun. If you want to find the company that I work for, Swiss Water, we're on social media at Swiss Water. If you want to find me personally, I am at Strumpf M. And have fun with Leaderboard. Enjoy the challenge. And thanks for watching.